Hey guys, this is my first review. I plan to create more of these in the following period, so I would be grateful if you subscribe to my channel. This review is about my own bike, BMW S1000XR, first generation, production year 2015, with more than 100,000 kilometers on the clock. I purchased the XR three years ago with around 30k on the clock, and in the following time, by my own maintenance, I've made another 70k plus. What I have to emphasize at this moment, and what I will discuss later, is the huge positive impression the quality of this bike has made on me. And also I hope you will find some useful and interesting information about this motorcycle and will be satisfied with the review. I've divided this review in few segments. These are introduction, about getting the XR, sorting the problems of vibrations, personal impressions after first ride, then the purpose of the bike, sporty ride, touring, comfort, wind protection, long ride experience, then the engine, its power, elasticity, gearbox, quick shifter, current state of the engine, problems with generator, cam chain noise, installment of manual cam chain tensioner and so on, then its brake and suspension, then the bodywork, about quality of construction, current state of plastic parts and paint, consequences of long mileage, uh, worn parts, etc. Then the accessories, about the things I added to the bike in order to improve its comfort, wind protection and efficiency of the wearing parts. And at the end, I will discuss in detail the maintenance of the bike, exactly what I did at what mileage, how much it cost me, and maybe some advice to current and future XR owners about how to properly maintain this bike. So let's begin. Before I got the XR, I owned Yamaha Tracer 900, which I purchased new and sold after around 3 years and 65,000 kilometers. It was Tracer that opened my eyes for this type of motorcycle, with the upright riding position, solid wind protection and enough torque at low RPM, which provides aggressive ride when required. However, Tracer had many flaws that I discovered not long after buying it. These were first very uncomfortable seat, bad suspension that was too soft with pretty scary diving of the front part and hard braking, and what really freaked me out was its weird vibrations between 4 and 5 thousand RPM, uh, which in my opinion started after a while, maybe after a 20k service. And eager for more serious bike, I found the uh, S1000XR reviews on YouTube and started researching about the bike. It seemed that such a motorcycle is perfect for my needs, with enough power and torque for the sporty ride and the possibility of comfortable ride at the same time. However, aware of Tracer's vibrations, I was afraid of uh, XR owners' experiences with uh, its serious vibrations on the handlebar but I still decided to buy it and find a solution for the vibrations afterward. From the moment I climbed into the XR seat, I've fallen in love with this bike. Really, my initial thrill with this bike lasts even after 70k kilometers, and I'm going to explain you why. Yes, uh, the XR has some by handlebar vibrations, but their frequency didn't bother me. Uh, they were somehow different and bearable. Nevertheless, I reduced them almost to zero by installing these iron ends I made for less than 10 euros. And of course, there are many bar ends from notable manufacturers on the market, like Evotex, but I didn't find it necessary to buy 50 plus euro bar ends when these cheap ones do the same job.
So, what's the intended purpose of the XR? Or who would be the aimed customers that should buy it? Well, if you ask me, everyone. But all jokes aside, such a shape, performances and features of the motorcycle will always have its buyers. Among these, the first ones would be earlier owners of sport bikes whose backs cannot endure the bended riding position anymore. So they want a sport bike with an upright riding position. Actually, this bike matches the most touring riders who sometimes, or often, want a sporty ride on twisty roads. XR's sport performance uh, is astonishing. From its power of still respectable 160 and 165 horsepower, and even better distributed uh, torque that provides a great elasticity of the engine in realistic road conditions by strong pull from low RPM, I will discuss it in detail later, to the perfect uh, BMW's uh, DTC, Dynamic Traction Control, then great Brembo radially mounted M4 calipers with, for 2015, still revolutionary but nowadays almost standard cornering ABS, BMW's uh, mark is ABS Pro, and a very intuitive semi-active suspension that always works fine in both modes. Given this, uh, XR is all the time able to follow and sometimes even to overcome sport bikes in street conditions. It is also solid for track riding, but it has, it has its limits there as expected. When it comes to touring, you realize after first try that it has a great riding position. Yes, the angle is sharper than on Kawasaki Versys, uh, the seat is firmer than on BMW GSA, vibrations higher than on BMW K1600 GTL, but overall this bike is more than acceptable in terms of comfortability for long, long distance touring. For example, I've made several rides with more than 1000 kilometers in one day riding and not once I felt any significant problems. The XR seat is surprisingly comfy given its look and pretty thin foam. And if you don't suffer from height, then the BMW's high seat is an excellent solution since it provides additional 15 millimeters of foam. And for those who always want more, there are many aftermarket seats from famous manufacturers. Overall, comfortability is contributed by the great suspension and quick shifter that prevents the pillion from hitting you in the back when changing gears. Wind protection with a standard windshield is not that well in touring conditions, but by getting a touring windscreen with potentially wind deflector, as is the case here, the XR becomes proper cruiser. It enables you to communicate through the intercom at speeds over 160 km per hour. Also, these Wunderlich side deflectors are really a good accessories since they reduce the wind buffeting on the torso and neck. Protection from rain is also pretty good. When it comes to luggage, an XR equipped with OEM cases offers enough space for storage. There are two original side cases with around 30 liter each, uh, very easy to put on and remove, and two versions of, to of the top case, smaller one, with around 30 liter capacity, which is practically useless in multiple days tours, and it cannot fill a full face helmet. And the large one, with a capacity of 49 liters, enough to hold two helmets, but it is ridiculously expensive. In my case, I found a middle solution by getting a BMW Vario top box that offers enough space for a full face helmet and even more and thanks to its variable capacity it provides a pretty nice visual effect. And of course uh, one can always expand its capacity by adding a waterproof soft bag onto it. The only downside of this top case is its weight because it is much heavier than the OEM BMW top case. 
S1000XR is equally comfortable for the pillion as it is for the rider. The seat is wide enough, knee angle is even more open than the rider's, which brings uh, additional comfort. Wind protection is solid, not excellent, but that is actually the problem on all bikes, except maybe the ultimate cruisers. Rear foot pegs are very ro robust and solid, and because of their low position on the bike, they do a wonderful job. All being said, the XR is more than a good touring bike. The bike rate for multiple day long distance touring, riding on highways, curvy roads, except off-road of course. It is obvious that this bike is not made for an off-road, hence it shouldn't be exploited in such conditions. Alright, uh, the real stuff is coming with the next part of this review, because I will discuss in detail all important features of the bike's engine that survived more than 100,000 kilometers with only minor issues. So stay tuned and see you soon.